What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. Okay, you guys that follow the channel saw our initial coverage on iOS 16. One of our latest videos told if we thought you should actually download the beta now or not. And today I want to go ahead and jump into a somewhat lengthy list of unfeatured new secret tips and tricks for iOS 16. So these are some of the additional uh, really unlisted or undocumented changes that I think are really cool and some are obviously a lot more substantial than others such as uh, landscape and portrait face unlock we've always had portrait but landscape is now new if you have uh, capable hardware as Apple is saying but let's go ahead and jump into these again this is not going to be an all-inclusive list this is just what we found so far so if you guys see anything else drop a comment down below leave a thumbs up for this video we really appreciate it and that new give thanks option is now on the channel where we can give a somewhat of a tip jar if you feel necessary. So let's jump right into this and like we just talked about, yeah. So now not only do we have portrait unlock, but finally if you're laying in bed or you pick your phone up at a, hor uh, you know, on a horizon aspect, if you lift it, you can see it actually just unlocked, no issue there. Let's do it again. And you can see it's just as fast as when you lift it up traditionally. So I think that is a huge upgrade. Uh, I'm not sure why it took so long for Apple to implement that, but here we are nonetheless. One of the other somewhat minimal updates that is really cool that we're definitely happy to see is finally, 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 let me get out of here and go to sounds and haptics. We actually have the ability to have keyboard feedback so you can do sound and haptic or either or or both or none. So I personally love haptic feedback. Android devices have had this forever and with the haptic engine in the iPhone 13 Pro Max I think it feels great to type on and get that responsive feedback to know you actually did what you were expecting to do. I never used the sound option but that is still there as well if you wanted to use it but now you do gain that haptic option as well. All right, so next up in photos, you have these two new folders that you can see we just went into. They're gonna be hidden and recent, as well as duplicates. So it'll automatically pull together any duplicate photos it thinks it finds, and will give you the option to delete them all. But the more interesting of the two are your hidden and recently deleted folders. So once you do that, it will require Face ID to get in, as well as your recently deleted folder as well. So I think that's a very cool add-on. One other feature too, in your library, if you actually go to a photo now, you can actually edit the time and date as well as the location for where that photo was taken. A lot of people think, why would you need to do that? Nowadays, you know, these iPhones are pretty smart. It's pretty good to geotag where you're at. This is more so if you import a lot of photos, from your laptop or from another device, say a camera or DSLR or something. This will give you the capability to edit it if that was wrong at that point in time. Thought it was pretty cool to have. Very neat there as well. You do have a more organized note app. Um, I'll go ahead and give you a quick glance. I do have some stuff there that I don't want shown on camera, but you can see exactly how everything is listed here. It's very nice to have outlined by year and depending on how you have it featured uh, you can adjust that as you need you obviously have your smart folders now as well which will come in handy if you guys are a big note-taking fan like I am in here one huge addition that I'm really happy to see is with airpods so any airpod version you have whether it's airpod pros airpods or airpod maxes if you go ahead and actually take one off and I'll go ahead and put them in to hopefully trigger it so one thing a lot of people were clamoring for is a AirPods app. Unnecessary, really. But Apple found a way to bake it right into the settings. And you can see this new option popped up for my AirPods Pros. And this is just as good as any app that could they could have come up with. It obviously will adjust as you uh, connect different audio sources for your AirPods. But you have your tip fit test and everything you needed right here instead of having to go in the Bluetooth menu and all that. 
A huge feature here is actually being able to find that version number to see and make sure you're on that latest software since it automatically could connect, could, should connect and update. Uh, so all that is here now in the settings menu. So I think that is a huge, huge upgrade and I'm definitely glad to see they initiated that. Um, another undocumented tweak that I could find is in the wallet app. You can actually now track your orders. This will only apply for orders placed with Apple Pay. So keep that in mind just because like after ship and all that can uh, accumulate everything from your email account. This will purely only pull from what you might have used in your wallet app for, Air, uh, for uh, Apple Pay. So not all inclusive yet, but it is a good step in the right direction for that. Back in the settings app also, we actually now have the option if you guys FaceTime to do live captions. So again, another Android feature coming to iPhone. Live caption is in beta, but it will let everyone on your call know their speech is being transcribed. All audio is processed on the device. Accuracy of live captions may vary and should not be relied upon in high risk situations, but this will obviously do what it says. It'll trans transcribe whatever everybody is saying right in FaceTime. So pretty cool. Um, little addition. I like that. Moving on beyond that also, and I should have showed you when I had the iPod, uh, the AirPods in, if you go to your music app and you are playing something, there is now a new logo for where the audio is coming out of. So you can see it's connected. Let's go ahead and play this. Turn this down a little bit. And you can see right there, it is showing it's playing from AirPods instead of the old AirPlay signal. So, pretty neat. I believe you can see that on the lock screen as well. Neat little touch ups that Apple has done to tweak there as well. So, aside from that, in your contacts widget now, also, if you guys utilize it, there is actually the ability now to show location, missed calls, unread text messaging straight from the contacts tab. So I think that is a really cool addition. I usually leave this on Siri suggestions, so it's not always strictly on the contacts tab, but yeah, another nice little change there as well. So one thing I don't really see the need for that was updated here as well in your Siri commands you can now have Siri hang up. Uh, you literally have to say, hey, you know what, and call or something like that. But if you do this, the person on the phone is also going to hear you speak that. So it seems a little unnecessary when you can literally just hit the hang, the hang up call or just turn on the option for the power button to end a call as well. But it is there. So is Apple Watch mirroring that they talked a little bit about. I have not actually been able to get that to work yet. If you guys have, leave a note in the comments down below. This is pretty cool if your watch face or your watch itself becomes uh, unresponsive or you break it, it will mirror in live time to your actual iPhone. Pretty neat. Beyond that, weather got a huge upgrade and a much deeper integration with the company, I think it was called Dark Sky, that they uh, bought out year or so ago, maybe two years at this point. Now instead of everything just being basic information here, you can actually click on it and get a more thorough breakdown of the weather needs. And not only that, you can change into your UV index, the wind, rainfall, feels like, humidity, visibility, pressure. There is quite a bit to see in this new app, as well as little daily summaries and about each of those aspects. Pretty cool, definitely nice to see there finally utilizing the weather app as it really should have been all along. All right, moving beyond weather, if you go back in your settings, we also now have the ability right on device to be able to get custom domains in the iCloud setting. So if you actually hop into your Apple ID and go to iCloud, you can see now at the bottom here, you have custom email domain if you go ahead and click on that, you can literally buy one or set it up right on device. So if you wanted to go ahead and buy one, let's go ahead and do phones and drones here. 
and search, it'll give you a breakdown of pricing and what is available. So you can see phonesanddrones.io and any other recommendation it might have. Pretty neat to have if you guys wanted one. What it'll do as well is if you pick one, like phonesanddrones.net, it'll take you right to Cloudfare to complete your purchase. Go ahead and cancel that for now and go back out of that. The next documented or undocumented change is in books. So if you jump into your the books, pick one. As you can see, we have the Steve Jobs book here we we're reading. You now have the option in here to change themes. So if you go ahead and click on here, you can see themes and settings, and you have six options to choose from, depending on what you might like. And yeah, we don't use books too much, but it is nice to have a couple of these options built right into the app if you wanted to change your viewing preferences right there. The next one's kind of cool, especially for you that travel a lot. For those of you that do, let me open up our iPad really quick, and I want to show you how the new live transcription works. Let me take it out of this case for us. Right through a photo, or your camera, I should say. So I hope you guys can see this. I'm going to zoom in. So we have a foreign currency here. When you open your camera app up and hover over it, you get that new text field option. And you can see it automatically pulls a currency. If you click it, it'll give you that live uh, translation of what it is in US dollars. Or you can obviously change it into different currency, however you'd like to do it. So you can see 1.04 of this equals 1.264 dollars. Pretty neat little trick for those that travel a lot, if you're in Europe or in a foreign country, now you can know the equal comparison or the conversion right on your device. One other thing I did forget too in the Photos app. So here we are, we have a photo pulled up. When you edit it, if you want to say auto adjust it, and let's say change the exposure up, change the highlight a little bit, you're like, oh, I don't really like the way that worked out. You not only have an undo button now, but you do also have a redo button. Nice to have just in case you want to revert something to something you just changed without having to redo it all. And the last one I want to show you, which is I'm sure certainly not the least, uh, Apple has kind of updated the way they do software updates. So it used to be all or nothing. You either had automatic updates on or off. Now you can actually click on this and in order to combat malware and all that, you have an option that they can allow to push system and data files. So instead of having to do a whole dot release or anything like that, you can now have it just set to let Apple push out a patch to fix some of those bugs, or not even bugs, just a, a, a basically a combatant to that firmware or mal malware, I should say, uh, to make sure that doesn't happen. So yeah. That is a couple of the new updates I've found. Again, let me know what you guys might have seen in the comments below that I forgot to mention or I haven't found yet. If we find a list of other features, we'll go ahead and make another video for you guys. But for now, this is it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.